I began to hear what I felt to be Satan laughing at me. And I also was feeling all kinds of strange things on my body. I just felt very out of control. I was six years old when I saw my first pornographic magazine. And at the age of 12 is when I started heavily watching hardcore pornography. As a child, I had a lot of questions and nobody to run to to ask uh, what was going on and what, what these things were. And then shortly after that, I began to, uh, to drink. By the time Michael was 18, he was drinking heavily. The drinking became a little bit more habitual, and, uh, and then I started dabbling in drugs. And I was starting to begin to really like the high, and because it kind of was, for me, it was an escape. I was trying to find myself, thinking that maybe this is, this is where I'm getting acceptance right now, so maybe this is where I'm, I need to be. And then I'd have regrets, and maybe for a week I'd stop, but I'd always go back. Michael's partying hit a dangerous level when he tried acid. I got in my bed and I began to hear what I felt to be Satan laughing at me. And then I also was feeling all kinds of strange things on my body. I was getting scared. I, I was thinking, this is not funny anymore. I'm not having any fun. It was the first time I, I, I saw it as evil. Michael met a friend that led him down another destructive path. He was one of those guys that uh, he make you laugh. I kind of latched on to him, and he began to uh, introduce me to particular drugs that I'd never tried, uh, one, one of which was a, a drug called cocaine. And I began to indulge in that with him, along with the drinking and just really more than my body could, could handle or my mind. Or the, I mean, the guilt was unbelievable, too. I just, I didn't know what else to do. I just felt like, I felt helpless. I remember just, I was going, 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 because that's what cocaine does. It just makes you want to go more and more and more. And uh, some guy came up to me, I remember, and he, he said something along the lines of, if you don't stop what you're doing and calm down, you're gonna have a heart attack. I put my hand over my heart and I realized it was just going really, really fast. And I was like, wow, that's not normal. And so I remember getting home and laying in my bed and literally praying that God would spare my life um, because I thought I was going to have a heart attack. I just, I came to a place in my life where I was desperate and I was, uh, I was just wanting to cry out for help and I didn't know where to run. And I passed this church. I remember walking and sitting in the back row and the pastor was taking questions from the congregation. And I remember just getting enough courage to raise my hand. And I said, I feel trapped and I'm scared. What, what do I need to do? Help. And uh, he said something along the lines of, son, you need to make a 180 from the life that you're living. He says, and you need to give your life to Christ. Receive that gift of salvation. And it was just, just a beautiful moment because it was a realization like, yes, yes, the Spirit of God convicted my heart. And uh, I just right then decided by the grace of God that for the rest of my days I was going to follow after him. As Michael began to grow in his relationship with Christ, God used others to help him walk in freedom. To have accountability, godly accountability is crucial. I know so many people who uh, continue in the same patterns because they're not changing their atmosphere. Run for help. Don't, don't wait. Don't wait till it's too late. Unless Jesus is in the equation, uh, it's gonna fail. It's gonna fail over a period of time. Jesus is the, is the answer for you. And uh, that's why the Bible says, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one gets to the Father except through him. Lord, I put my trust in you. I need you, Jesus, to come to my rescue. I've had a lot of things, a lot of choices that I've made um, that have hurt a lot of people along with myself. And to know that Christ would accept me and forgive me 
how can you not serve somebody who loves you so much that he would lay his life down for you so that whatever you've done or whatever you will do uh, can be forgiven so you can be together in eternity. Um, that's somebody that I want to serve for the rest of my life. And that kind of freedom only comes through Christ.